Hello friends and welcome back to Too Many Minis. My name's Ozzy and we've got another one of these Warhammer Stormbringer unbaggings. This is the second delivery. Let's get it cracked open. It's got a piece of paper. So last delivery we had issues one and two. So this is issues three, five, four, five and six and what they call the hobby kit or something I think. Some plastic glue. Citadel plastic glue is okay, it works perfectly well. I prefer a brush on, I prefer Tamiya extra thin, super thin, whatever it's called, Tamiya plastic glue. But the Citadel one works fine. Top tip, if the end of it ever gets blocked, just heat it up with a lighter, put it over a flame, and it gets unblocked. It's great. A pair of snips. A pair of flat sided clippers. Just what you need for getting things off the sprue. These are very simple ones. These aren't like the ones you get, I think, from Games Workshop if you buy their Citadel ones that cost a lot of money. Maybe they are. But I think these are pretty simple. They're small, they're nice and compact. You put them flat to the sprue, clip it off, use them all the time. It's good to have another pair. A mold line removal tool. These are okay. You're probably better off using a knife for a lot of things or a nail file for removing some lines. But these are good for kind of big chunky things. I use these a lot when I'm doing terrain kits. You can really scrape off quite a lot of plastic with them. So for instance, the recent kill team into the dark terrain was badly made and some of the pieces didn't fit together properly. They were too tight. You could you can scrape off huge chunks of plastic with this really quickly. So yeah, mold line tool, scrape towards yourself. Pretty good. And these tiny weeny ones are kind of useful. I have one with a handle, but this one is kind of compact. You can put on your key ring so you can like prepare models wherever you are on the go. Not that useful. So there you go, some hobby stuff, useful. Issue three. Issue three has five Vindictors. And these are the basic spearmen of the Stormcast, the most recent wave of Stormcasts. Are they call Thunder, Thunder Strike Stormcasts. Nice looking models, much better proportioned and stuff than the original wave of Stormcast. I'm quite keen on these, looking forward to painting them in my scheme that I've started. I did a video of the ones I painted so far, but this is the uh, Knight Arcanum, how I painted her. And that's what I'm going to kind of carry on with this kind of Starfield scheme for my Stormcast with the black armor and gold trim. You get five 40mm bases with the holes in, the hex holes. Issue three seems to have the start of the rules, really, the kind of really expanding the rules, how to use war scrolls, the attack sequence. Definitely starting to teach you the game. Wound rolls, save rolls. Issue four is a paint issue, but there's four paints. It's kind of good. Uruk flesh, not a color I've used. Looks useful, looks pretty similar to Skarsnik, but as a base. We'll try that out. Retributor Armor. Again, not a color I've used, but it's uh, a fair bit different from Rune Lord Brass. A lot more gold. I think it's just a basic kind of coppery gold. Always good to have more metallics. Cantor Blue is the kind of dark-ish blue that Citadel do. It's, it's um, solid. It's not the most lovely color, but it works. And Lead Belcher. You can never have enough Lead Belcher. It is the best metallic paint that Games Workshop do works great as a kind of undercoat for all silvers, metallics. It's it's great. Go with these all the time. He's done everything. Mechanical parts, guns, armor, everything. Highlight with silver. Wash it with non oil. It's great. You never have too many pots of that. A Citadel starter brush. This I will say is for sure going to be hot garbage to use. Uh, Citadel brushes aren't the best, but they're okay. But their starter brush is like the worst one they do. Um, go to like a pound shop, you know, like a, the works or somewhere, and get some get some cheap synthetic brushes from them if you want. They're better than Games Workshop cheap brushes. Let's look inside issue four. Some nice pictures. I think this is the first sort of how to paint guide that the. Uh, the magazine series has had so far. As they always do with these magazines, they just tell you to paint straight onto the model. You don't want to do that. You want to spray prime it. 
any color, black, gray, whatever, white. Spray prime it first, but then do like they say and get stuck in with the paint. So it gets you up to where you can get with the paints that you've got so far. This is smart, you know, it's like saying this is all you've got. So you're painting everything green on the, the, on the Cruel Boys and uh, that's enough. Rend and damage in the rules section. And I'll be using these to learn the game. I'm, I'm, I've not bought the big AOS rule book, so I'm happy to follow along in the magazine. So the mostly painting issue, but pretty good if you're just getting into the hobby. Issue five. Some dice, some more dice. Did they forget them in the issue one? Probably black and white dice. Oh, a six though, so yeah. Could be worse. So this issue comes with a Prey to Prime, and now this is an exclusive model to the Stormbringer magazine. Not previously available. She's quite cool looking. She's got her hair in a nice bun and holding her helmet under her arm. She's gonna look like that when she's assembled. But it's a nice model, and that's a nice thing with these mags, is having the little exclusives and stuff. Something to make your army look a bit different from somebody else that just got the Dominion box set. 40 mil base, no hole. It's got a fold out. Destroyers of the Mortal Realms. Defenders of the Mortal Realms. Mostly just some nice photography. Mm, a bit on chaos. How to thin your paints, very important. Issue six has 10 Hob Grot Slitters, and I really like these models. I started painting some of these up already. I had some from an eBay lot I got. I've done the armor a bit and done a very basic kind of yellowy green on the flesh, but it needs washing and stuff. But I'm gonna do them super simple. You, you, you probably want a lot of these if you're gonna have an army of cruel boys, and yeah, I don't think they need a ton of time on them. So I've started some of them off. And here's you get a unit of 10. I bought those ones assembled, so I'm going to look forward to assembling these myself. Probably convert them a bit, you know, kit bash them, move the poses around a bit, because if you're having a lot of them, you want some variety. So we've got a great horn blower and a banner. Unlike the gut rippers, which didn't come with them, uh, the gut rippers, in fact, I converted up my own. I bought an extra set of the gut rippers from issue two and converted up my own drummers with some easterling drums from my middle earth kits cut off their spears and turned them into beaters for the drums they've got shields too and i converted up a couple of banners uh, a bit of green stuff a bit of metal brass rod through the drilled through skull on top pretty simple but effective banners so now I've got 20 of those gut rippers with the musician, banner, and also two champions. You get one champion in the set that you can make up. And I also had the one which was like a... I also had this guy who was a store anniversary model, which I picked up last year. Um, I believe he's going to be in Stormbringer Magazine too as a kind of special gift if you keep subscribed for the first, I don't know, X issues. Um, it's a really nice model, but you know, it's just a regular champion. So in game, it's pretty simple. It's just part of that squad. 1025 mil bases for your hobgrots. And you can see if you follow the painting guide in this issue, you're going to get your hobgrots to a pretty similar place where mine were. A bit greener the paint, but similar sort of thing. I'm going to wash mine green with some sort of green wash. More of these simplified war scrolls for learning the game. Is that all the existing? Yeah, all the all the war scrolls of what we had in the magazine so far. And each issue has a kind of you know small battle for you to play, learning some newer rules, adding to that you know building as you go along. Next issue seven is going to be two paints with the Corax white and the Katachan flesh, the dark flesh tone. And after that is the Lord Imperitant with his cute little birdie dog. Uh, that's a great model. So those are the next two. Issue nine is going to be the Swamp Caller Shaman and Pockrot, which is a great, a great 
duo. And issue 10 is going to be the Stormcast half of the Underworlds box they did, Zandai's Truth Seekers. Was it Hallow Hall? No, I can't remember what the name of the Hallow Deep box set. We're getting the uh, the Cruel Boys half of that later, but the the, the uh, Stormcast models, all four of them, are coming in issue 10. So that should be the next delivery of uh, Stormbringer. I'm trying to paint along with a few people on the Discord painting along with Stormbringer so far. That's my killer boss that I did standing on a Stormcast. Uh, so that's what my orcs are going to look like, basically. Or orcs, whatever. Cruel boys are going to come out looking like this guy, hopefully. If you want to paint along with us, join the Discord or post on Instagram with the tag Too Many Minis. And uh, we'll, we'll feature some of them. If you send them through, we'll feature some of them in the videos. Let me know if you're enjoying Stormbringer magazine. I am. I think these two miniature ranges, the, the new Stormcast and the Cool Boys, are just fantastic. So I'm, I'm digging getting these in the post. It's quite fun. I've got an awful lot primed and ready to paint. I need to add those four I converted, kit bashed to the to the ready to paint queue, and then I'll crack on with it. Let me know how you're doing. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>